One of the new features inside Generate Blocks Pro 1.7 that I haven't spent much time talking about yet is the backgrounds panel. It is actually leaps and bounds above what we had before, so I thought I'd do a dedicated video exploring the different options in there and showing you a practical use case of how I use this to create a nice little overlay effect that I can use across my entire website. This is something I use on a ton of my websites and the new global styles and being able to attach this to classes is really gonna make this more scalable. So if that sounds like it could be helpful to you, stick around and let's get started. So just as a quick refresher, let's take a look at what the older system forward backgrounds look like here inside Generate Blocks. We can scroll down here and we of course have our background colors, which are here under the colors tab. And then under backgrounds, we have the option to choose the advanced background or choose the image URL here. So we could go into our library and choose an image. But from there, our options are pretty limited. We can change the opacity of the image. We can change the size and the position here by just typing in coordinates or we can add an overlay by clicking use gradient, changing the image back to element and changing the gradient to pseudo element. And then we could put some kind of gradient over the top of that image. But of course our options here are fairly limited and it's a little bit finicky every time you have to mess around with it. So let's go ahead and clear that out so we can take a look at how this works inside the new global styles panel in Generate Blocks Pro 1.7. Here, I'm just gonna add a class to this. We'll just say, background demo and hit create. We'll start with a blank style and we'll go down here to open up our backgrounds panel. Not only is it more powerful, I think it's a little bit more tidy too. Here we can choose the background color just like we did before, but when we wanna add an image, we go up here to click this plus button to add a new background. So to start out, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out that background color and we'll go in here and add a new image. You can see we have our background type here of image, gradient, overlay, and none. We're just gonna start with image here and I'm gonna select an image from our media library. And now we actually have a few controls we didn't have before. Here for the background position, instead of having to type in the coordinates, we can just move this little dot around so we can focus on different areas of the image. This is a nice visual way of being able to select the part of the image you really wanna highlight, and it's a whole lot easier than trying to guess the different percentages. We have the options here for background repeat, the size, the attachment type, and the blend mode. But what's great about this system is we can actually go ahead and hit the check mark here and add an additional background on top of it. So here we can add an overlay. We can choose our overlay color and maybe we make it fairly dark. We can choose the blend mode and we can hit the check mark here. And as you can see, now we have two different backgrounds stacked on top of each other. First, this image, and then second, this overlay. But you can stack as many things as you'd like. So we could go in here and change this to gradient. And the new gradient picker is miles above what we used to have. Here we still can see a preview of our gradient. We can choose linear or radial. Mm -hmm. We can choose the angle, and then we can choose our colors here. So let's go ahead and choose maybe a blue and a lime green just to make it really apparent. That has some transparency on here, so I'm gonna boost it all the way up but we don't have to stop there with just two colors. Now we have the ability to add as many colors as we'd like. So let's go ahead and maybe add a pink color in here and we can play with these sliders to decide where these different gradient color stops should land. So maybe we get this green one right in the middle and we go from blue to green to pink. Now we can use this blend mode control to actually show through to the image underneath it. Of course, you might need to play with options to see what works best for you, but you can create some really cool effects using just these simple controls right here inside the builder. Like I said, the new background section here inside the global styles is miles above what we had before. But let's talk about a practical use case. When we did this just now, we actually attached our background image to this class. So let's add a new section here. And let's say we wanna do the same style, but in this section, we need a different background image. Well, if we go in here and add our class that we just used to create that background demo, we can see that same image came across. And if I go in there to edit that, we'll go into backgrounds, we'll edit that image and change the image out. You can see that's gonna change the image out everywhere it was used because that image is actually attached to the class. A more practical use case would be detaching the image so we can use any image we want, but keeping the same filtered look on top of the image. So let's take a look at how we can actually do that. To start, I'm gonna go ahead and delete both of those sections and we're gonna start from scratch with a new 
pattern for a section, which just brings in our container, our inner container, and puts some default padding on it. Now, just for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna give this a minimum height of something like 500 pixels, just so we have a lot of working area here and you can really see what's going on. So instead of adding the image to the class, I'm just gonna use the block level stylings to add the background image. So here, we're just gonna scroll down under backgrounds and we're gonna choose the background image. We'll start here with these people on the bike. Now what we wanna do is add a class for the filter effect that goes on top of the image. So I'm gonna come up here, we'll just call this gradient overlay, and we'll hit create. Now this is a little bit tricky and I didn't realize exactly how it was gonna work at first because we actually need to use a pseudo element here. So to do that, we create this class first, we're gonna go down here to position, we're gonna to go to relative, and now we're gonna click this more drop down so we can get to the after pseudo element. We do that by clicking the new button and then here under pseudo elements, we can choose after and hit create. So you can see now we're not affecting this class, but we're actually affecting the pseudo element, the after pseudo element on that class. To set this up, we need to go to position, absolute, and we need to change all these coordinates to zero. We need to go down to our content field and just put in two quote marks, single quote marks, which will just give us some content in there. And now you can see if we go into the backgrounds here just for a demo and I put a color on there, you can see our pseudo element is covering up the entire space of this section, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we can go ahead and create our filter here inside this class on the pseudo element. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to backgrounds. And the first thing we're gonna do is choose a gradient and we'll go ahead and set up our gradient again. I'm not too worried about the exact colors we used last time, but I know we used a blue and a green, and we'll go in here and find a nice pink color as well. We'll edit the places where these different colors stop. To me, that looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is add an overlay on top of that, just because that color might be a little bit bright. We might not be able to put text on it comfortably. So I'm just gonna add a built-in overlay here just with some black to darken that up a bit so I, that I know I can put white text on top of it. Maybe something like that. Now we actually need the image from behind it to shine through. To do that, we're not gonna use the blend mode here. We're actually gonna go down to our effects panel and under the mix blend mode for the entire pseudo element, we're gonna change that to maybe multiply, or we could go with overlay, which I think will work perfectly in this case. So now you can see that gradient is shining through with the image, and we have a little bit of an overlay on it so that we can still see white text on it. But the real question here is, are we able to easily swap out the photos and keep the same style? So let's go ahead and add another section. I'm gonna go down to our background panel and we'll add a different image this time. And now we'll just choose the gradient overlay class, gradient overlay. And you can see we have our same effect coming in here, but with a different image. So this is perfect for if you wanna set up hero sections or backgrounds that change the content, the image in this case, but keep that same filtered effect on top of it. As you can see, this new system is a whole lot more powerful. The only thing I don't love about this setup is we're still having to use the old controls for the block level stylings, so we can't position the focus point of our element with the cool little visual way like we can inside the class. So for now, we still have to type in coordinates, but it's my understanding that the controls that are inside the global styles now will get migrated eventually into the block level styling, so we have some continuity between all those controls. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure you keep up with all the latest from Generate Press and Generate Blocks, go ahead and hit subscribe, and we'll see you next week. A couple quick bonuses for those of you who stuck around to the very end of this video. There are a couple things I wanted to point out here that I failed to do during the course of the video. One is when you have multiple backgrounds here, you can actually reorder these by just dragging and dropping. This is really handy as you're playing with the different effects and you might have multiple layers of backgrounds. I also would give you a word of caution that you don't wanna to add too many of these different backgrounds on here or you can start having trouble with performance. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I don't believe this is new inside Generate Blocks Pro 1.7, I think this has been around for a while, but not everybody knows about it. You're used to being able to put in hex colors in here or choose from different colors in your palette, which uses the variables from your theme. But did you know you can also use other color models? If I go in here and grab this RGBA color, I can paste that in here and that will work. Or I could grab the HSLA, 
We'll just change this color here, copy this, and paste it into the background here. And this HSL color also works inside the color picker. If either of these things were new to you, I'd love it if you put bonus in the comments, just so I know how many people made it to the end of the video.